Hello, my name is Sarah, and I am your chakra coach. On this podcast, we'll be exploring how the chakra system can help guide you to grow your emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual wellness, leading you closer to your highest self. Hi there, everyone. What's going on? I hope that everything is going well for you and that you're remembering to breathe and to take care of yourself. You know how things happen in clusters sometimes? Like you learn something new and then you see it everywhere or it keeps coming up in conversation. The same thing happens with the questions that I get from y'all. It's it's a little weird. Like, I don't know, like we're all tapped into the collective unconscious and all start wondering about things at the same time. Now, most recently, I've gotten a lot of questions about using the moon cycle for chakra work, which is a bit of a complicated topic. We frequently think of the moon cycle as being related to menstruation, which it is. But even if you don't menstruate, you can still feel the energy in the changes of the moon. For example, in a lot of traditional yoga practices, everyone takes the day off of physical practice on the full moon and new moon days because of how the moon affects our bodies and our energy. In some practices, people are encouraged to take the first one to three days of their periods off of practice too, even if their cycle isn't synced with the moon. And everyone has chakras and an energetic body that is affected by the moon phases. So the 28-day cycle that the moon goes through has an impact on all of us, no matter our biology. And I've been getting questions about both. For the next few weeks, I'd like to go over each of the four basic phases of the moon. There are technically eight, but we'll cover the basic four. Which chakras they impact most and how we can use the power and magic of the moon to support our energetic work. As for the moon cycle and the menstruation cycle, I've reached out to an expert on this topic, and she's going to come on the show to guide us through what we need to know about that. For today, we'll start with the new moon. Not only is that what we think of as day one of the moon cycle, the next new moon is about two weeks away from when this episode airs. So if you want to listen, then do a little preparation for the event. You'll have time. There are a couple aspects of each phase that I want to address as well as which chakras are most closely related to it. As always, remember though that the chakras are a system. For the sake of our brains, we separate them, but they are working together at all times. We don't really work on them individually. We don't isolate them. So thinking about the new moon, we know that the energy of the moon is a feminine energy. Sometimes that's a hard concept because the words feminine and masculine get all wrapped up in our cultural expectations. I think it can be a little easier to use the words yin and yang, which since they're not in my native language, don't have the connotations that the others do. So I'll use yin energy and feminine energy somewhat interchangeably. Yin energy is a restorative, calm, healing energy. It's a time of darkness, which makes sense because during the new moon, we have less light in the night sky. Oh, as a clarification, a new moon is astronomically when the earth is between the sun and the moon and casts its shadow, making the moon invisible to us on earth. During a new moon, It's a time of quiet. Seasonally, this phase is represented by winter, which also makes sense because winter is our darkest season with shorter days, less sunlight, and a drawing inward. Winter is colder, significantly colder in a lot of places, moving our activities indoors and creating a pause in our life cycle. Yin energy is typically thought of as nurturing. And this is a phase where we can take advantage of that natural energy and really engage in our self-care. 
I did an episode about this a few weeks ago, what self-care really is, as opposed to the um, social media version of it. Go back and listen if you like. But the main takeaway is that we do things for ourselves that will have long-term benefits, not just a short-term gratification. The chakras associated with the new moon are the sacral, third eye, and crown chakras. The sacral chakra, as you may know, governs our emotions, our relationships, and reproduction. Traditionally, the new moon is considered to be a time of lower energy. So we don't always have as much emotional bandwidth as we sometimes do to handle the stressors in life. Our bodies can naturally be a little more tired. And this is a good time for emotional rest as well as physical rest. And physical rest is just that, sleeping a little more, pulling back on your exercise program, eating nutritious, easy-to-digest foods. Emotional rest is a little trickier in our society. There isn't a lot of space for rest. I've never heard of a company that suggested their employees take it easy during the new moon. But there are things we can do to help us stabilize our emotional state to help keep our sacral chakras in balance, to help keep them from getting overwhelmed with energy that they're not designed to handle during this period. During this time, we're likely to feel very sensitive, like things we might normally handle easily become very difficult. During the new moon especially, the the day or so leading up to it and the day or so after, Try to find some quiet time to use for meditation, journaling, breathing exercises. Avoid excess stimulation. I know lots of people like to have background music or television, but consider reducing some of that during this time to give your nervous system a break from processing. Or or try instrumental music, maybe even chakra healing frequencies or tones to fill that need for you without taxing your body and your brain too much. The third eye chakra, another energy center associated with the new moon phase, is responsible for our intuition as well as insight. This quiet time is an excellent opportunity to look inward. If we're following the cycle of the moon, we'll find that our intuitive sense during the new moon days is heightened. Maybe not the first time we try this, but over time, we get more in touch with our subtle energy body, more open to the universe's messages for us. However, if we're not resting, not spending that quiet downtime, our thinking brain will be too busy to hear them. Again, the same practices that work for the sacral chakra in this phase are good for the third eye. Sitting in meditation, resting, relaxing journaling. The inward facing practices make space for intuition and insight to come into our conscious minds from the subconscious. You could even keep a moon journal recording your intuitive thoughts and then going back to read them later to see how your intuition is developing. Another thing to be aware of is that the third eye chakra is very sensitive to light and with the darkness of the new moon, that can contribute to the feeling of low energy. While it can be a part of the natural cycle to embrace the extra darkness of the new moon and winter, be careful if you're prone to depression or seasonal affective disorder, especially during the literal winter and the new moon days. Consider getting outside into the sunshine if there's some. Even a short walk if it's cold you can make a difference. I even use an indoor UV light to make sure I get enough of those wavelengths. If you choose to do that, great, but let's try to avoid using it in place of rest and sleep or to force ourselves against nature toward higher energy. Think of it as a supplement or preventative measure, not a way to ignore the darkness or our need for rest. The third chakra that lives in the new moon phase of the lunar cycle is the crown chakra. If you listened to the series on planetary connections, you know that the crown chakra is associated with the moon. 
That was in episode 121, if you want more details. The crown chakra is our connection to the divine, which sits beautifully with our increased intuition during this time. In fact, we can think about intuition as sort of being in in two parts. In the third eye, intuition is a lot about our subconscious putting together ideas and information that we've gathered and presenting it to the conscious mind as a fully formed thought, idea, or feeling. In the crown chakra, intuition might be better described as divine inspiration, that feeling that something is coming from beyond you, from the universe or the divine, or however you envision that which is larger than us. Geniuses in all disciplines, from science to literature to great artists have described that sensation as if they were just a conduit for energy coming from beyond. And we all have that capacity when we're in tune with the crown chakra, and especially so when we use the natural energies of the world. The best way, I think, to balance the crown chakra is through meditation. And the state of mind we cultivate while in that space is the exact state of mind we need to be in to receive that divine download. You're probably noticing that a lot of these practices are the same for each chakra during the new moon, and that's not an accident. You don't need to work on the sacral third eye and crown chakra individually. As you sit in meditation or your breathing practice, you'll be affecting all of them, the whole system. Remember, this is a time to rest your energy, not necessarily build it up. That's where you're going to find the healing and restoration that goes with this new moon phase. I also want to share two more practices that are really nice during the new moon. The first is planning or metaphorically planting seeds. The new moon meditation I led online a few months ago was all about planting seeds. It isn't a time for growth per se. It's a time for preparation. A gardener might use the winter season to organize their spring planting, and we can do the same for the weeks and months ahead during the new moon. And it doesn't have to be anything big or grand. Maybe just spend some time nurturing an idea that's been sitting in your head for a while. Or schedule a few exercise classes for the next phases of the moon if you've been working on your physical health. It's just an opportunity to use the quiet to prepare yourself for the active phases to come. You can also plan to rest. Give yourself permission to take time to just sit, not to do chores or work or anything. Unstructured time that lets you be calm or creative or bored. Rest is a form of planning, a form of preparation because you're allowing physical, mental, and emotional healing during that time so you can face your challenges with a full battery. One way to recharge, and the second practice I wanted to share, is restorative yoga. Restorative yoga is a very still, very slow-paced asana class. In an hour, maybe we'll do six or eight poses and hold them for a long time. It's comfortable and supported using pillows and blankets and blocks and really letting tension go. It's the perfect practice to reset your nervous system and deeply relax the muscles. A woman in my most recent class said it was like taking a guided nap, which I thought was an excellent description. Look around your community and see if there are any studios offering this style of class during the next new moon. It's, it's an incredible practice anytime, but especially when our bodies are already looking for that stillness. If going to a studio isn't a possibility for you, check out YouTube and do it at home. You'll have to provide all your own props, but you don't, you don't need anything really fancy for it. I find this type of yoga asana practice to be very 
accessible, especially with a good teacher. Eh. It's appropriate for nearly everyone, but of course, if you have concerns, you can talk to your doctor or medical practitioner before you go. I, I honestly cannot recommend restorative yoga highly enough. Start to notice how your body feels during the phases of the moon. It's well documented that the moon affects our planet and our bodies and using the lunar cycle and our chakra work just offers us a way to get more deeply involved with the rhythms of the world. If you want to talk more about this, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Your Chakra Coach. Or if you have a question that you'd prefer to email, reach out to Sarah at YourChakraCoach.com. And as always, if this show is improving your life, I'd love to have your support on the Patreon page. The New Moon Meditation on Planting Seeds and Preparing is available for download there, as well as several other meditations, yoga postures for the chakras, and more. Your support means the world to me, and it helps me bring this show to you week after week. Until next time, let's explore what we might like to try at the next New Moon. Resting and healing and tapping into our divine feminine energy. Bye.